see uh, that as the tactic here by the Confederation of British Industry, that actually this is a disguise, a mask, to remain forever in perpetuity in the single market? I wouldn't say that. There's a lot of briefings going on, a lot of letters flying around. You know, I think people are beginning to get a bit sort of fed up of the negativity coming out of um, the European Union. And to be frank, that pushes people like me who voted Remain. Uh, we need to get on with this. At the end of the day, this was a democratic... Uh, result to vote to leave the European Union. They are the boss. The people are the boss. We need to get on and deliver that. And these letters, I can see what people are trying to do. And letters come from both sides all the time. Frankly, I find in Plymouth on the doors, people are getting pretty fed up of it. And we need to get on with uh, where we're going. So how much longer should Theresa May pursue the negotiations to get to a trade deal? Well, look, this is the other side of it. I'm not going to pick over the bones of what her or David Davis is doing. You know, they've been given a task to come out of the European Union and we need to fall in behind them so they can get the best possible deal and then get on with it. If they come out every time and say, uh, you know, that's not how negotiations work. And ultimately, we're the ones who will get seen off, and it's the British people who voted for this who are the ones who will be seen off. When should David Davis walk away from these negotiations? In order to allow proper preparations for the alternative plan, Plan B, which is WTO, our view is Christmas. So, no deal. So, at Christmas. No, a, the different deal, the WTO deal. Let's be very clear. You know, the mischief makers on the other side are saying no deal means you crash out. You don't. If you prepare for it, you go to a different type of deal, which is WTO based. And that's absolutely fine as a base. So you would like David Davis to walk away at Christmas if there hasn't been any progress? To confirm the clarity that we can't reach agreement in time, we need to prepare, we need to go to WTO. Preet, do you agree with Richard Tice that there isn't a, a cliff edge as such if you prepare properly for no deal? I don't think so. I think Labour's made it really, really clear that even even the Home Secretary has said it's unthinkable to think about a no-deal situation. I mean, Labour are very clear. We need to listen to businesses. It's great that the businesses have actually come out jointly together and written to the government to take heed. And I don't agree that they want a permanent Brexit. They want to have a transitional arrangement, which gives them an opportunity to address the concerns around access to the single market and the customs union. And we need to listen to them. I mean, they're members of the Cabinet, um, as Preet has said, uh, like the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, who says it is unthinkable to walk away without a deal. Why is she wrong? Well, I think what she was really saying is there's a strong preference for an EU FTA, but if you can't free reach trade that deal. agreement, free trade deal, you, you've got to make that decision and prepare for the alternative quick. Because the worst thing in this world is we let this drag on throughout the whole of next year and we get trapped into a really bad deal because we're desperate, because we haven't done the preparation. And that's the total flaw in the Labour policy, which is that we end up being trapped in a really bad deal because they're not prepared to walk away. And do you back then Labour's proposal to block a no-deal scenario? Absolutely. I think we need to make sure that, you know, uh, whatever deal we have has got to be good for the economy. It's got to be right for workers' rights, for consumer rights. We've got to have the protections. I think that with EU withdrawal bill was supposed to be discussed this week. Unfortunately, it's been delayed. Phase one of the negotiations have been now put back to December. I think we need to really be clear. It's not about time. It's about the detail. People don't have the detail of what, uh, what Brexit is going to look like. Do you think a transition deal is vital? Look, there's a really key principle here is that if you're not prepared to walk away from negotiation, you're going to get completely yeah. seen off by it. And that is the thing we have to abide by because we sold a vision, or people sold a vision of what Brexit is to the British people. We have to go and deliver that. And if you go into it saying, we'll take anything you give us, then clearly it's not going to work out. So I, I don't agree with that position, but I do, I do think that we need to just get on and get on with delivery. But when you say get, get on and get on delivery, would you like to see a transition deal in place? Whatever works for everybody who is around the table. I, you know, I'm, I don't work in the Brexit department. I don't know um, clearly but about the But you know it would outside. give two more years. I, then, absolutely. Um... And in Plymouth, but in Plymouth, what people are asking for are on the doors is just to get on and do it. So if we need to do that transition period, fine. OK. But let's have a clear direction of travel and let's get there. One of the things that might deliver that transition deal is the UK government saying in more concrete terms that there is more money that can be put onto the table in order to guarantee that transition deal. You've just said, if that makes it happen, would you support the government doing Joe, that? whatever the government needs to do to get on and deliver, this is the single fundamental challenge we face at the moment. And whatever Theresa or David or Boris needs to do, we need to get on and deliver it, because people who voted for us expect it to be done. So you would back more money being put on the table at this point? Whatever the government needs to do. Richard Tice, thank you. Pleasure.